Hello friends, this video on wind, storms and cyclones part 3 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exams. So with these two experiments, we got to know that yes, air pressure exists. So there is a pressure which is being exerted by the air. So that is kind of proved. Now, how exactly air pressure controls the movement of air? Because movement of air is wind. So basically we are trying to see that how is wind related to air pressure. Now what happens is increased wind speed is accompanied by decreased air pressure. This is a very important concept of air pressure. Now what, what, what do we mean when we say increased wind speed? What is wind? Nothing but moving air. When air is moving that is wind. Now, what would determine the speed of the wind? Speed of the wind is nothing but the speed with which the particles which are present in the air are moving. So, when I say increased wind speed, I basically mean to say that the particles in the air or the air particles are moving faster. So, that is the increased wind speed. So, those particles in the air, wherever they move very fast, it causes a decrease in air pressure. Now you might be wondering that how is speed related to pressure? Let's look at this example. So I am going a little out of track to explain you the relationship between wind speed and air pressure. So look at this scenario where you see it, it's like a queue of children. They are standing in a queue and you would see that they are like moving one after another. So they are all moving one after another. So each of them have enough time to say ring the bell. So every time they move ahead, they have to ring a bell. Now since they are moving comparatively slowly, so they have enough time to ring the bell. Now instead, if you have another scenario where the same bunch of students, they move, but they moved really fast. Now when they moved this fast, they hardly, each of them hardly had any time to ring the bell in between because, you know, they were in a huge hurry. So when they are in so much of hurry, they did not have time to ring the bell in between. Right? So what was the difference that you observed in the, these two scenarios? So in the first scenario, since each of the child is moving slowly, so they have enough time to ring the bell. In the second scenario, the ch each child is moving very fast, so they do not have time to ring the bell. So the same thing happens here. So when I talk about wind speed, we are talking about the air particles. So here each of these child, they represent air particles. So they, these are like one one air particles. So the, when air particles are moving slowly, that means the wind speed is less. So they have enough time to exert pressure on objects. Right? For example, when, when air moves, our hair starts flowing with the wind. That's because the particles in the air, as they move, they exert some pressure on our hair. And because of that, the hair moves. So when the particles are moving comparatively slower, they have time to exert pressure on other objects. But when they are moving so fast, they hardly have any time to exert pressure on anything. So basically when they are moving slowly, they are going to exert more pressure. So the air pressure is going to be more. But when they are moving very fast, they hardly have any time and therefore they will exert little air pressure. So therefore increased wind speed is always accompanied by decreased air pressure. So in any region, if the wind speed has increased, so sometimes when uh, during uh, a bad weather, uh, rain after a heavy rain, sometimes you will see that wind speed is very high. So whenever the wind speed is high, the air pressure in that particular area decreases. So with this we get to know that when the speed is slow, so basically slow wind speed. So this was the example of slow wind speed and slow wind speed would mean increased air pressure because each of the particle has enough time to exert a lot of pressure. Whereas in when the wind speed is very fast, so increased wind speed. So each particle doesn't have enough time to exert pressure. So therefore, this would be accompanied by decreased air pressure. 
So let us try to apply the same concept to this example of uh, the straw. So as I mentioned before, what happens when we suck through the straw? The liquid which is present inside the glass, it tends to come up through the straw and that's how it enters our mouth. So here we will see another interesting uh, concept associated with air pressure. So here if you see the movement of air happens along the gradient, along a region of higher concentration towards a region of lower concentration. So what is this concentration which we are talking about? So basically in this case the movement of air not only this case, so everywhere we will see that air always moves from a region of high pressure towards a region of low pressure. So this is another important uh, property of air or this is another important concept of air pressure. So therefore in this case also if you look at it when we suck, so we we suck in the air from inside the straw. Therefore, low pressure is created inside the straw. So inside the straw, there is low pressure. So outside the straw, there is high pressure. So air moves from region of high pressure towards region of low pressure. And that is why the liquid also moves with that air pressure. So basically, the movement of the liquid also happens from outside the straw to inside the straw. So wherever air pressure is more, air will move from that area towards the area where air pressure is less. Now as air moves, so, so from this you understand that basically air moves only when there is a difference in pressure. When two regions have different pressures, only then air moves from region of high pressure towards region of low pressure. And this moving air is called wind. Now as wind moves, it exerts pressure on other objects and make them also move along with it. Therefore, when we ride a bicycle in the direction of wind, we get an additional force, we get an additional support. Therefore, we can ride it with minimum effort because air is also exerting some pressure in the same direction. On the contrary, when we try to ride a bicycle opposite to the direction of wind, it we need to apply a lot of extra effort. That's because the movement of wind is actually exerting an opposite force on us and therefore it is opposing our motion. So in order to overcome that, we need to put that extra effort. So this is the concept of air pressure. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.